This is part three of Fibre Channel, the fabric login. If you already know a little about IP networking, but are new to Fibre Channel, I think you'll really enjoy this lecture because it shows you the magic of Fibre Channel, how it allows servers to automatically discover and connect to their storage. First thing to tell you about is the switch domain ID. I find this quite an unusual name because when I think of a domain, I think of a group of things. But in Fiber Channel, a switch domain ID is assigned to an individual switch. So each switch in your network is going to have its own unique switch domain ID. And that's how the switch is identified in the network. One switch in the network will be automatically assigned by default as the principal switch. With Fiber Channel, pretty much everything happens automatically and the information gets replicated automatically through the network as well. You can override that and set things manually if you want to, but out of the box, everything is pretty much automatic. So by default, one of the switches will be elected as the principal switch. And one of its jobs is to make sure that all of the other switches have their own unique domain ID. Each switch learns about the other switches in the network and how to route to them based on their domain ID. So the domain ID information is replicated throughout the network. All of the switches learn about the other switches and their domain IDs. Next thing to know about is the floggy, the fabric login. When a server's or storage system's HBA comes online, it sends a floggy, it's a fabric login request, to the directly attached switch. That switch will then assign it a 24-bit FCID fiber channel ID address. The FCID assigned to hosts is made up of the switch's domain ID and the switch port that the host is plugged into. The FCID is similar to an IP address, but not exactly the same. You know, we mentioned in the earlier lecture that a WWPN is pretty much exactly like a MAC address in Ethernet. Well, an FCID does the same job as an IP address. It's an address that's used to route traffic around, but it doesn't work quite the same way as an IP address is. The FCID is used by fiber channel switches to route traffic between servers and their storage and switches maintain a table of FCID to WWPN address mappings and which part the host is located on. So let's see how that works with a diagram. We've got the storage system up at the top here, server one down at the bottom, which is gonna use the storage system. And we've got a couple of fiber channel switches, switch one and switch two. The storage system comes online and when it does that, the HBA will send a floggy, a fabric login request to its directly attached switch, which is switch two. That includes the WWPN. So switch two sees that WWPN, which is plugged into a particular port, is sending a fabric login request. It will then assign an FCID, and the FCID is based on the switch's domain ID and the port that the WWPN is connected to. Switch two will then put all that information into its floggy database. So that's a mapping between the WWPN and the FCID, and the switch also knows the port that that device is plugged into. So that happens when the storage system sends the floggy to switch two. The same thing happens when server one sends its floggy, which goes to switch one, because that's a switch that it's attached to. Switch one will assign the FCID, and it will put the mapping between the port, the FCID, and the WWPN into its floggy database. So on each switch, the floggy database includes all that information about the directly attached devices. The next thing that happens is that information will be shared with the other switches in the network. So fiber channel switches share the floggy database information with each other using FCNS, which is the fiber channel name service. Each switch in the network learns that information that was in each other's foggy database. It learns where each WWPN is and how to route traffic there. Because each switch knows about the other switches and their domain ID because the FCID is based on the domain ID as the first part 
Now all of our switches know how to send traffic to all of the different WWPNs in the network. So let's have a look at what's happening here. You can see that switch one and switch two, they've shared information with each other. So if I do a show FCNS database on switch two, I can see the mappings for the storage system and for the server as well. I can see the WWPN and I can see the FCID there. So Switch 2 knows how to send traffic to both the storage system and the server. And the same information is on Switch 1. It knows how to send traffic everywhere as well. After the Floggy Fabric Login process is complete, the initiator will send the Ploggy, which is the port login. Based on the zoning configuration on the switch, the host will learn its available target WWPNs. So we have got server one down at the bottom. It sends the port login to switch one. Switch one can see in the zoning information that server one is allowed to connect to the storage system. And then switch one will tell server one that. The next thing that happens is the PRLI, which is the process login. So finally, the initiator host will send a PRLI process login to its target storage at the far end. The storage system will grant access to the host based on its configured LUN masking. So server one sends the process login all the way up to the storage system, and that includes its WWPN. The storage system then looks in its LUN masking information, and it sees that that WWPN is allowed to connect to the LUN for server one in this instance, and server one now connects to its storage. So you can see that's the magic of Fiber Channel. That all happened automatically. The WWPNs are already set because they are burned in on the cards. We as administrators don't need to set those. And everything with the Fabric login process happens automatically. As long as you've configured your zoning on your switches and you've set up your LUNs and your LUN masking on the storage, you really don't need to configure anything on the server. It will automatically discover and connect to its LUNs, just like magic. Okay, so that was how that works. I'll see you in the next lecture for some more Fiber Channel information.